down to Mueller time. Pretty much whatever happens tomorrow is high stakes. High stakes hearing on Capitol Hill. The stakes are extremely high. The stakes are so high. The stakes could not be higher. We are on the eve of historic hearings. Historic. Historic, historic testimony. testimony. Historic. 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 This is the room where history will unfold. <laughs> that, that question, was the ball advanced? No. Impeachment's over. They needed more fuel for any kind of impeachment effort. So look, on optics, this was a disaster. But he um, a lot of Democrats in particular used the D word and branded this a disaster. Is it just me or does this remind you of something? Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. President oh. Yep, definitely. It's election night all over again. After hyping up Mueller time and casting the hearings as some kind of massive historic event, the hard reality is starting to set in and you're even seeing some in the media call it what it was, a disaster. The DNC definitely put out their talking points for the media because they're all basically saying the same thing, which is to deflect from the fact that Mueller's team was made up of a bunch of Hillary donors and casting the Republicans as horrible unpatriotic monsters. Which, as anybody who watches the media knows, is par for the course. Like I said, they all pretty much said the same thing, so I'm going to focus on MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell. She's a classic case of a Democrat political operative who really thinks she's fooling people into believing she's a hard-hitting journalist. Just one example of Andrea Mitchell's bias in favor of Democrats happened recently when she was attacking Trump as a liar for labeling the squad socialists. She says, first of all, none of these members of Congress are socialists, and it's just those mean, nasty Republicans who want to frame them that way. Andrea Mitchell is either lying or she didn't do her research because both Tlaib and Cortez are members of the Democratic Socialists of America. None of these members of Congress are socialists, but that is the way the Republican leadership wants to frame this election. People are going to call me a socialist for believing in those things. Like, all right, call me a socialist. Like, I don't cool. give a damn. <laughs> we'll get to that clip and others right away. But first, I want to take a moment to thank our amazing sponsor, RibT.com. Guys, if you're used to buying your daily wear in a 10-pack plastic bag, then perhaps you should consider upgrading to Rib T's signature cool nylon silk underwear and t-shirts with friendly stretch fabric that keeps you feeling dry and comfortable all day long. Besides the high quality and comfort, you're buying from an American company who actively supports free speech right here on YouTube. If you'd like me to give your website or social media channel a shout out, just head on over to ribtcom forward slash drone tech and make a purchase using the promo code drone tech. Then just email me the proof of purchase and I'll give you a shout out. Thank you. I think it's an epilogue, and I think that's very sad, not for the reasons that some of the partisans might think. Oh yeah, those darn partisans. Not at all like you, right, Andrea Mitchell? The only partisans are those who oppose you politically. Take a look at this panel of hard-hitting truth seekers that includes disgraced liar Andrew McCabe and Democrat Party mouthpiece Chuck Todd. Surely, it's those mean, nasty, monstrous, unpatriotic Republicans who would dare to ask questions about Mueller's supposedly impartial team of Democrat Party and Hillary Clinton donors. It's just so ridiculous. If this was all flipped around, the media would be having a heyday over the fact that an investigation of a Democrat president was made up of a bunch of Trump or Bush supporters. Instead, we see these people behaving the exact opposite of a journalist. Instead, they're trying to bury information and keep it from the public because it's just not useful to their narrative. I think the issue of Russia's attack on our election is not getting enough traction. Listen to that objective, hyperbole-free analysis of what Russia did during the election. Sure, they bought some Facebook ads, and yeah, they tricked some Democrats into giving up their stupid passwords, but clearly, that's equivalent to an attack on this country. Yes, this defender of truth's rhetoric mirrors that of Democrats who think that buying Facebook ads is just like an attack on Pearl Harbor. But that doesn't mean she's a partisan shill for the Democrat Party. It's shameful. Shameful that Republicans were so focused on trying to undermine the origins of the investigation. I've said this a bunch, but it's completely baffling to me that these supposed truth-seeking, democracy-defending journalists aren't at all interested in the origins of this investigation. Sure, I mean, if everything was on the up and up and there was no reason to dig, but there's so many red flags. Isn't that exactly what journalists are supposed to do? They're supposed to investigate, but instead they're attacking the people who are asking these questions. Apparently, Andrew 
Andrea Mitchell thought that Republicans were going to be focused on advancing the Democrat Party and media narrative that Trump is guilty of obstruction. Even though the investigation ended without recommendations for indictments because there was lack of evidence to prove a crime. Gee, it's almost like Andrea Mitchell is advancing a political agenda and ignoring facts that are inconvenient to that mission. That's granted some of the questions were convoluted, they were coming at him fast, and, and the Republicans were doing what, you know, you see in a lot of trials. They were just trying to discredit him in any which way they could. Again, we see this so-called journalist who won't even discuss any of the facts brought up by the Republicans, just dismissing them as convoluted, which is clearly the behavior of a journalist and not a Democrat Party activist. Seriously, if there were a team of pro-Trump investigators and they were investigating Hillary Clinton, the media and the Democrat Party would never let that stand. There would be nightly condemnation from the network, cable news, and the late night shows and regular protests that the media would promote until that investigation was completely discredited. These are precisely the sorts of double standards that have this country so divided right now and why trust in our media is at an all time low. It seems that once again, the media's partisan political hype has come back to bite them in the ass. That's all I have for you today, folks. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, do not forget to hit that bell notification. If you enjoy my content and you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can also send me a donation on PayPal. Thank you very much. Thank you.